Group. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to this first uh, webinar of the Sydney series of webinars. We already have some attendees joining right now. Really nice to start of the session. Um, and uh, so welcome. Thank you for being in time. I will um, make a, about one hour of webinar, which will include interactions with you and uh, with your on Facebook because we are also live on Facebook right now. So we invite the people to join us actually on the even join us on the webinar platform. And if you're on Facebook right now, you can find in the comments the description of the video a direct link and you can just join us and then you can interact with us because of course this is not possible on Facebook to ask questions and interact with us. Um, that will be a so, I will first explain to you in a few words what we will do today. The idea is to present one of the three handbooks of the Sydney project. And today we are uh, dealing with the, the handbook that's talking about integration in the school context through uh, collective singing. And we will have two other sessions in the coming days one tomorrow at three, and one on Monday at three, dealing with other topics that we will talk about later. So first, let me introduce myself. I'm doing this whole webinar. The next webinars will be uh, operated by uh, other people. I will do that with the introduction, but we will have people from the uh, other uh, partners. First of all, my name is Tom Ferrand Cooper. I'm working for the European Core Association, uh, the main European network for all things related to collective singing, choral singing. And we were the main coordinators for this project along with organizations. Um, this is a bit a special uh, um, modality to interact with people. Um, we have a chat system. This is how the webinar can work because we cannot all talk together or use our cameras. Um, and we can use the, the, the chat function, which is a most likely on the right corner of your screen, depends on how you organize your screen, but it should be there. And then you can type a text like I did right now. Let's go to everybody. Here you are. My hello appearing, and I can see that uh, Sonia Greiner. And uh, this gets better now, but still a bit of an echo. So I hope you can hear my voice okay. I can try to speak louder. Um, tell me if it's fine. So there, in this space, in the chat space, you can actually interact and ask questions, we can try to answer the questions because I have my colleague Julia here. Yeah. Yeah. Signs and things. And while I'm talking, we can just write things and, and then we can try to talk about it. If you have specific questions that you like to see addressed and answered at, the, at a specific point, you can also uh, mark your questions um, with the question mark that appears on top of your chat box. Or we can also decide to do it ourselves. So Julia will look at the question, but maybe decide to see the question for later. So that's one of the ways to interact. And, and we'll see at this point how it works. We try to be practical. Yes, somebody tells me that the sound signal is not very clear. Uh, we are doing our best. I hope it's better this way. Um, maybe you should Try and put on headphones, maybe it might help. I hope it might help. Um, so, welcome to uh, everybody. And once again, I'm here talking to the people who are watching us on Facebook because we're also um, live on Facebook. You can join us and follow this webinar on the Sydney Handbook uh, by using the link that's in the comments of the video, and then you can interact with this. Okay. So now let's go back to the project itself. This webinar is about uh, a specific part of the Singing project. The Singing project has a full title, which is Singing Collective Singing in the Integration Process of the Migrants. A two year long pro 
run, we have set up with 11 organizations, up in Judith, from a lot of different countries, from Belgium to Turkey uh, and Germany, Lebanon, France. And all these organizations came together to work on the topic of using for inclusion and integration, especially dealing with young migrants. Could it be that it's and this project was supported by the European Union through the Erasmus Plus project. And, and um, we are very grateful for that because that's a question that has been with us for a long time. And then finally, we had a chance to actually create something that we hope to be useful for the community collective thinking. So, why have we been discussing this issue of uh, integration through choral collective thinking for a long time? Um, because we have met a lot of projects being uh, implemented in different countries over the years and heard a lot of stories about people using collective uh, for integration. And so we had the first stream uh, of uh, indication that there was there a question. A lot of people coming to us asking questions how can I do that? I'm facing this problem or this problem. I have this solution. I would like to share them. These were mostly occasional encounters. Um, with, uh, okay, let's try this thing. We also had uh, set up in between 2013 and 2015 a study, um, study, study of the situation of collective singing in Europe, it was called Sing, Sing Europe at Hong, where we gathered a lot of technical information, but also we ran a survey. And all around uh, Europe, asking actually the 5,000 flyers um, different questions. One of the questions was actually, why are you gathering to sing together? What is the aim of your ensemble? And this question, we had the list of items. So some of them said, we want to produce public content. We want to contribute to the singing general well-being. But one of the answers we could provide was, we want to contribute to social integration of singers of different generations of all cultural backgrounds. And then actually 65% of the choir want to reach the same and part of them are not succeeding. This was for us an interesting indication of the specific needs there. And if you make the calculation, uh, it shows that we have about uh, 250,000 uh, choirs who could be constant so it was not a minor issue for us. I will try, people are complaining about the sound, I will try to switch on the sound. Second, can you hear me better? Yes? Yes, ah, wonderful. So now I'm switched to the, another microphone, good. So I was talking about this, this need, why uh, did we set up this uh, singing project? And because we knew the need was there through organizations, through experiences, and through statistical evidence that there's a need and a will to address this question. So we gathered with this organization um, to set up this project that we'll present now. So why did we do that and for whom? That's another big question. So of course, the final uh, beneficiaries of such a project are actually young people that are uh, now in different European countries, young people with migrant backgrounds, but also the local people, uh, our original population, if you want, uh, who live together with these people. So it's a, a very broad approach to uh, the, the question of migration because it's not a one-sided approach. It's how can people actually live together and develop together. So this is the final target group. The project is not directly addressing them. They don't have to read about the project. They don't have to directly get involved in the project per se, because the project, we develop different products and, and books technically for our direct target group, which are the people who want and are trying and succeeding in setting up projects that use collective singing for integration. We are designing them as professionals in the youth field, uh, so they can be conductors of uh, choirs, children choirs, they can be music teachers, they can be social workers, different people who might need uh, some guidance and help in setting up their own local specific projects in these fields. 
And now to reach all these uh, uh, operators of projects, we need what is called multipliers, organizations in the youth field, but also the media and all the people who can spread the information about this, uh, this thing main project. So this project main aim at the end of the day was to produce and books information condensed in uh, an easy format so that people can set up their own project. We don't give a user manual that uh, you start there, you end up there if you follow all the, the steps. The idea was more to give tools and uh, um, um, ways for the people who have their own idea, their own project to overcome the most uh, common challenges that have been discovered all across Europe to use some ideas from best practices, good experiences that people have uh, uh, discovered also in their own uh, uh, experience and to create simple documents that can be downloaded now in 11 languages for free. And we also discussed a lot with this group of partners and said, okay, we cannot just make one document because the situations are quite different. Let's try to have uh, a toolbox that can be adapted to different situations. And therefore, we created three different handbooks. The first one is about singing with group of young refugees, because there we have a quite specific situation. Young refugees may be gathered in an accommodation, maybe in a camp in some uh, cases, or in a social center, but they are uh, together. Uh, and the idea is to see how we can use collective singing as a way to help them acquire language skills and so on. And we will have a specific uh, webinar about this handbook too. The second handbook is including young people with migrant background in an existing choir. Let's say you have a choir and you have somebody in your village or your city town that has a migrant background or maybe also a refugee or something like that whatsoever. And you would like to uh, get them on board. And then you will also have to face and deal with specific challenges and advantages and a new uh, richness to your, to your work. And then we try to work on that in the second handbook. And the last one is working in a school environment. And this is the one we will discuss today. As a complement, as a, an addition to all these handbooks, uh, we also created a repertoire guide that I will also quickly present at the end of the, of the presentation, because we think uh, it was useful to have uh, indication what to sing and what to do. Um, so that was the, the idea. And so now, before we go further, we wanted to, to see, since you are there, to ask you also a few questions. Um, and we have there a little survey, and we would like to know among the, the people who are there, how many of you have actually downloaded, read, or just downloaded but not read yet the handbook and so on. So if you could just take a few seconds to uh, um, feel the question and we'll come back to discuss the results in two minutes. I'm coming back. Okay, half of the, the participants have already answered. So I'll just leave you a few seconds. So most of them, of the people, most of you actually have answered that they have downloaded and read one or more of the end books. So that's, that's good, but maybe half of you have not done so. So I will really invite you to, to read these end books. You can find them, of course, on singmeme.eu. It's there. Um, this, they are for free, and uh, I will really hope you can find uh, IDs there. I will now share the results, and I guess you can see some results uh, appearing on your screen. Uh, 
and on close and go further down. Let's go back to the presentation. So these handbooks we hope are practical. We have a good feedback from people using them in the field. And as I said, remember that you can have uh, other webinars about the different handbooks coming up in the uh, coming days. Uh, tomorrow about singing with groups of young uh, refugees and on Monday about including young people uh, in existing choirs. You will find everything on singming.eu. Good. Now, let's go to the core of our presentation. Today, we wanted to talk about this specific handbook that's dealing with working in a school environment. So this is uh, uh, about 30 page uh, handbook. It's quite easy to read. And um, we will go through the contents and specific aspects of it um, during this presentation. So the first question is, for whom is this handbook design? Why did we do that, and especially for whom? We thought it could be useful uh, for school teachers, of course, that are in this context of a school situation, but also any people involved in after-school activities. Uh, in certain countries, the school starts quite early, and then you have after-school activities. We consider it's the same logic, uh, and they, they would be also concerned by this handbook. Music teachers, of course, choir conductors who work with school uh, children, pupils, the school administration, but also the parents. All the students or pupils or children themselves might be interested uh, in this uh, type of project and might maybe eventually learn something from reading these handbooks. Uh, to say it in a word, that's for all the people involved in this type of social, socio-cultural work in schools. And, and there we also have a question because we don't know all of you. We can see the list, but some of you are new, are new friends. And we would like to know uh, who you are, technically. So if you can just answer this quick question again and tell us in which category you are. And maybe if you have already worked with young migrants, that would be nice. I'll just give you one minute to do that. Okay, more than half of the participants have answered, so maybe I will stop the voting, just leave you a few seconds to describe yourselves. Okay, let's end the voting and let's look at the results. Uh, so we have school teachers in the room, music teachers, choir, uh, conductors, some musicians, and most people, I mean, five of you are involved in social, social cultural work. A third have worked in a school environment uh, with young migrants or outside of school, and uh, two of you not yet, which means you may be uh, preparing projects in the field. So hopefully the, the handbook might be useful for you that we can discuss. Um, so that I will close the thing and go back to the presentation. So this is these are the specific targets for this specific handbook. Uh, the people we where we had in mind when designing the, the, the document. But it can also be used in other contexts than in the school context, because you can use them, of course, with any purpose that even if they're not migrants, in, a, in any human group, actually people have different cultural backgrounds. Some may be just watching TV all day long. Some will be uh, from a um, musician, family of musicians. Some will speak different languages and so on. So even though it's 
uh, designed to deal with this question of young migrants, it can also apply to other contexts. So it, we, didn't, we think it's also a tool that can be used in a more general way around the question of creating a community using collective singing uh, um, in a school environment. Because all children love to play and sing usually, and it's fun for adults too. So that was the, this idea we really think that can be used in other contexts. Now another question. Why do we think that collective singing is useful for integration in a classroom uh, or in society in general? We developed that a bit more in the, in the document, but I just wanted to show this uh, um, slide from Graham Welch, actually. Um, he tried to list and analyze singing and collective singing in terms of benefits for the individual and the group, uh, listing physical benefits, of course, on the, the, the respiratory uh, tract and, um, and on the whole, actually, system, including the immune system, is impacted by collective singing in a positive way. It has, of course, of course psychological benefits in terms of uh, interpersonal communication, expression of emotions, uh, and so on. It has musical benefits, helps you acquire a better understanding of music, develop a, a musical memory, and so on. It has social benefits, especially the collective singing context is by definition a collective activity, and everybody has to do something really together for the result to be uh, um, uh, music and nice music, so that's a, a good way to bring children together. And therefore, from all these benefits, you can actually draw educational benefits, maybe uh, in the uh, development of interpersonal skills, development of the new areas of the brain that helps learn better, acquisition of language, and so on. It's actually a quite powerful tool, and a lot of studies have been uh, developed on that. The European Choral Association has launched a um, scientific uh, review of the scientific studies existing that will be published in the coming years so that we can all use uh, um, proved um, research results and we will share that on our website uh, over the course of next year, most likely, if you are interested in the topic. Okay, so we have seen um, for whom is this handbook? Why we think uh, 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 collective singing is a powerful and useful tool in this context? Now the question is, uh, how do we do it? And the first thing we wanted to achieve with this handbook is to point to singing in school is actually easy, even if it has challenges. Let's look, at, let's look first at the easy part, let's say. Um, what are the advantages if you compare with other contexts? First of all, the school being what it is, the children are there. So you don't need to recruit your singers. You have a classroom or a group of pupils in an after-school activity. So the first step, which is always to make up the, the, the group or the collective, is already done. So that's already a big advantage. And in a lot of contexts, contexts the schools are a mix of origins and cultural backgrounds themselves. So you can also use this richness to develop your project. Another uh, uh, interesting situation is that the teachers uh, are, have a specific um, legitima legitimacy. They are a trusted source of knowledge in a school context. So they can be usefully uh, um, transmitting uh, uh, behavior, knowledge, uh, and ways of interacting with one another in this context. And so you don't have to build this trust because it's already in their function. And that's a, a great asset in, the, in this context. Of course, it may be easy, but we also have specific challenges. Um, the main challenge we have been discussing with people when collecting experiences uh, across Europe is the feeling of um, teachers and people involved in this type of activities that they don't have the skills. So they think, many uh, teachers think they just cannot sing and therefore they cannot have the children singing. And one of the aim of this handbook is just to tell them, okay, let's do it. Actually, you can, uh, because the aim is not to produce an, uh, something on the stage of the national opera or whatsoever. The idea is to have fun with the kids, create this community. 
And it's not so complicated, you can use tools. So that's one important point. It's also sometimes difficult if you want to rely, <coughs> sorry, on external help, professional musicians, you have to find them and you have to finance their work in some situations. And this is, of course, a challenge um, in some cases. Then we said the pupils and the children are there in the classroom. It's an advantage. It can also be a challenge because they feel they are forced to do it. So you don't have this voluntary involvement for them, which might be felt as a, as a constraint. Finally, and that's more a structural problem in some situation, collective singing, choral activity, and music in general is sometimes not a priority in the curriculum. So you have to uh, fit it uh, in different little uh, holes in your program or actually use it to develop uh, knowledge about history, math, language. Um, that's the other uh, trick we are also explaining in the handbooks. Um, good. So we've seen why and how you can start, how to concretely get started. In the handbook, you have a whole section on uh, dealing with the, the uh, expectations of the group, planning your activity, being aware of all these challenges that we are listing, and dealing with specific questions like the question of performance, which is a bit uh, a dual-sided question because in some cases it's actually a great motivation for the children to know that at the end of that process they will be uh, performing in front of their peers, the community, the parents, but on the other hand can also put too much pressure on an activity that, that's related to the process itself. Uh, so you have to balance these questions. All of these questions, this is just a very short list, we try to gather at the end of the document in what we call the checklist to, that can help you um, think about your own project because we cannot tell you exactly what to do. But what we were able to do is to develop over two pages a set of questions. And if you read them carefully and try to answer them for yourself, uh, it might help you have a better vision of the specific challenges that your specific situation might generate. And so I would really, if you have to read only two pages in this handbook, just go to page 25 and 26 and look at it. If we brought to you one question, one challenge, and maybe then one solution that you have not thought about, we will have reached our aim. If we bring you 10, then it's wonderful. But if we, by exchanging and gathering best practices, we were able to help you even on one point, that's already something uh, very useful. And um, so we would be quite happy. Then, I uh, know we have 28. I don't know if, uh, Julia, you have found some questions we could address now. Uh, not yet, so you have specific questions. Okay, so maybe we can go a bit further. And maybe I could at this point show you a little video about a um, um, uh, project that was run in Great Britain where they have developed this idea of um, uh, not t teaching all the children uh, how to sing together and have these singing activities, but they have chosen specific ambassadors or a group of children that were trained and they had to actually teach the, their friends in the, in the courtyard new songs. And I think it was a very interesting experience and we can show uh, three, four, five minutes of the video. And I will put the reference on the chat also if you want. So let's see if it works. Let us know if you have a sound. Ready, oh. steady, off we go. Jump, 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 jump. And we really like singing because it really makes us have a bright face. Here comes the other one, just like that. But when you learn, you can teach other people to do the same and it's just really exciting. Jump! 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 Singing Playgrounds is all about children singing and playing games with each other in the playground. My friend didn't want to join it, so I helped him and at the end he got a special sticker. 
It rejuvenates the singing culture within the playground and we use songs from all over the world, different languages, different cultures. We have the vocal tutors from Ex Cathedra in school with us today. Working with the song leaders, there are 30 identified children who learn the songs and learn the leadership skills that they need to teach other children in the playground how to sing the songs and play the games. I like helping the shy and quiet people because they really join in afterwards and it helps them overcome the fear. The song leaders are the key element. They are the ones that actually lead the project. The other children in the school are obviously seeing their peers in a position of responsibility teaching these songs. What was really great about today was that everyone was joining in. It was even more than 50 people and, it's, and the dinner ladies didn't have one single problem. I think this project is unique in that it's for the whole school and it's very accessible very quickly. I think so many people are inspired by this project and feel it special is because it's a wonderful way of engaging everybody in the school community from parents to dinner supervisors to children, all the children in the school, the teachers, the head teacher. And what Singing Playgrounds does so well is put back the idea of singing into normal things, into play, into relationships with people. It makes me feel happy because at least I know I've done something to like Okay, I think it was a good conclusion for this, uh, the presentation of this experience. So there you, see, you can see the power of singing on the children and empower, empowering them to be actually not just listening and obeying to others, but being themselves uh, carrying something and sharing something with their peers. I think that's a good example, and we've seen a lot of this type of pedagogy in place in the projects we have surveyed. Um, so remember that on the chat, if you have specific questions, you can just uh, ask them and we can answer them at any point or at, around the end of the presentation, and no problem. Specific challenges that uh, we have already a bit discussed uh, are also discussed and listed in the, in the handbook. Uh, Challenges around communication in the group and with the surroundings. Differences in musical cultures. We also, <coughs> sorry, talk about it in the handbook. Um, different cultures have different relation to music in terms of the way music is understood and uh, how it is sounding, how the people interact. They might have a different relation to polyphony in singing with different voices. They may have different relation to uh, rhythm and so on. So you can um, actually use the challenges to have a very rich exchange of expertise also amongst the pupils. And that's something that's quite interesting. We've seen projects where the um, practitioners were asking the children to bring from their family music and nowadays they can just bring a YouTube link on a song they would like to sing and then somebody from the family can also come and sing it for the class or these kind of things. So the differences can actually enrich the work in a quite easy way. You have specific challenges, and there I'm talking about children who have been through cases of trauma or stress related to migration. And we have a small paragraph on that in the handbook. You just have to be aware of the question, because of course collective singing is not there to solve this kind of uh, trauma. And then you can um, work in collaboration with other institutions or our people to try and address that. It's not, of course, the solution to all problems, but you can see how it can articulate. Since singing is a very, has very deep connections to the emotional state of people, um, you have to be careful also on, on this aspect. And of course, that's maybe the, the first thing people think about. You have different cultural and uh, religious norms related to singing, performing in, in front of an audience, uh, mixing jars and so on, and singing songs from another culture or religion. And these things, these challenges, potential challenges can be addressed um, in different ways, mainly by addressing the fact that sometimes they are not a real challenge. So we have a tendency maybe to think there might be a problem. And if you discuss it with the community, they might be actually fine or they might have another uh, way of addressing them. And mainly the idea is to get in touch with the families, with the community, and check what works or not. 
And uh, in the end, it's not so complicated if you involve the surrounding of the children who might themselves think something's a problem when it is not. So we have a, a, quite a big section on this aspect of specific challenges in the handbook. The global idea is to create a favorable context for the collective singing to emerge and to uh, be lively and productive for the, for the group, to, by investing, of course, in space, time, finding the correct musical skills and adapt the expectation of your project based on the skills you have at hand, which might be just your own as a teacher. But then you can always do something, even if you cannot sing, it's always possible to sing. Um, what type of musical accompaniments you can use and do you have, and do you want to have a performance at the end? And so we are listing all these questions and challenges to see how it can adapt. And then once you have your context, uh, you can, and you have to think about involving, of course, the children, as we have seen in the examples we had now, but also your school administration, the uh, world community, um, that may be the parents, the local community, the professionals surrounding the, the community, that can be music professionals, ambassadors, or people carrying the message uh, beyond the walls of the school. And of course, the local media, which creates coverage pride for the children about what they are doing and has a positive impact on your on your project for the kids. Um, now we have been talking a lot about the why, the context and so on. Of course the main question in this context is uh, how to sing before and we will come to what to sing. But first uh, going back to this idea that it is still possible to sing even if you don't have a, for example, a knowledge of uh, scores or, or, or um, music reading, for example. Um, in any case, with children, of course, the idea is as much as possible to have them sing by heart, which is an interesting expression that uh, said to sing not with the heart but with the brain. But I think this term is interesting, sing by heart, because you need to put some love and develop this love of music by really putting it in your body. Um, I really like this expression. And by repetition, imitation, by being yourself the example. And so that means a teacher, even if they think they cannot sing, they have to learn a song, sing it the best they can, even if you have a CD, and the children will follow the example of the teacher. And that's always a good experience, I think. Um, and then another aspect, we give some tricks about listening to the music with the children and trying to develop a simple analysis of the themes. What is it saying if you have lyrics? Uh, what is it talking about? What are the musical events? What is happening in the music? What are the emotions that are expressed in the music and how the different children can reflect on them and maybe have different emotions? And that's a way to bind the class together uh, through music, of course. But of course, the main question we have um, talking about these handbooks and this type of project is what do we want to sing and what can we sing in this context? And there we are, we worked quite a lot on this question for schools. You have specific examples in the handbook plus what you find in the repertoire guide of the singing project. And we uh, listed and actually filmed a few icebreakers. That is, these are games, musical games that help you creates this feeling of uh, togetherness and discovering each other uh, and um, working also on songs that don't use a natural language. They can be nonsense, text, or just playing with sound and very simple songs that can be used for language acquisition. Uh, I can show you uh, a few examples of what we did in the repertoire guide. Um, but I will say a word first about this guide. So this is the fourth uh, handbook. This one is only in English, but it's mostly in music in the end. The idea of this handbook was to provide a collection of repertoire that can be used um, in these different projects we are talking about. And we have two main parts. We have a list of songs and that's the second part there, repertoire from different regions of the world. The idea was to um, try to find, collect and reference songs from different 
countries where uh, many migrants come from so that when you are in contact with somebody with another cultural background, you can right away put a song on the table that you have learned and that you have a bit studied and as an exchange tool to tell them, well, welcome, you know, we are interested in your culture. It's not just about you doing what we do and being in our culture, but we can have this exchange. And by starting this exchange, you create already a very interesting uh, setup. So we have a whole section uh, uh, about that, that's organized and that you can find online uh, on the Musica database that we will talk about later. And in the, uh, in the repertoire guide, we also, uh, even though if it's a paper uh, document or a PDF, you also have links to a set of videos that we have created um, that are little games, songs you can use and just by imitation, by looking at the video and looking at the scores, when we have them, they, were, they are also on the database available. Uh, you can start um, using them directly in your school. So uh, maybe I can show you one or two examples. Um, let's try and do that. So uh, this one will be a Turkish the song. East region of Turkey, and uh, it's called Geydim Alder. Geydim aldır, altı da kıbaldır. Geydim aldır, altı da kıbaldır. Ne güzel dağlar akşam olanda, akşam olanda havade dolanda. Geydim mordur, kolları dardır. Geydim. So this is one example of, I think we made like 30 videos. Uh, maybe I can show you another one. So they're very diverse. Um, and with these videos, you can learn something by art. You have the reference and sometimes the score and the text. Oh, just games like this one, that's a game. This is a, a good um, uh, illustration of this idea. You don't have to always use uh, songs with text or lyrics in another language. Just also nonsense texts are also useful to work with a group of children. Of course, this applies to any type of school context. It's not limited to children with migrant backgrounds, as we explained, because children are children. But then uh, once you take into consideration the specific challenges and advantages of working with different cultures in a classroom, this type of songs are useful. You can find all these videos in a playlist on YouTube, and you can find the address of this playlist in the handbook on the singmin.eu website. Uh, and I think that this is the most downloaded, uh, of course, of the handbooks because conductors, teachers are very interested to having these kind of tools and explore, create their own project around music because that's the core of the, of the question, of course. I have mentioned this document. This is a, also a 30 or 25 pages document. And you can have as a PDF. But most of the contents that, what we, <coughs> that we have in there, we have also uh, one of our partner is Musica International. And they are managing the MusicaNet database, which is a very, very useful tool for everybody involved in collective singing, globally choral singing. It's a, a massive database of uh, uh, repertoire, globally speaking, with a lot of information you can uh, search. Um, and maybe we can, I can just ask you uh, if you have already used it and if you know it. That's a new question for you, if you could answer that. So have you just never heard about it or used it? 
I just use it regularly. So four people have answered. I'll let you answer it. I'm not allowed to answer it, but I would say, mm, I do not use it regularly. Well, I do actually, sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> I will show you the results once you have finished answering. So the Musica database, which is uh, a non-profit association running it, um, they have been working on it for a long time and they have a lot of volunteers entering the information. Uh, it's a very useful tool. Uh, I will then stop the voting and share it with you. So we have quite a mixed group and mixed results. Uh, some of you have never used it or don't use it uh, so often. Uh, so I will just make a presentation of how it works. Um, so basically on the Musica database, you can search. This is just a screenshot because I, I've tried to make a, a screen sharing, but it's not working so well. So you can search for uh, all type of information about uh, um, a song. So let's say you can go down into details by saying I only have uh, tenors and altos, let's say, and you can type in the, the advanced uh, uh, research. I have this voice, I want the text to be in Japanese and I want the piece to be uh, that long and so on. You have a lot of criteriums and you get uh, results. But in the frame of the Sing Me In project, they have added a tag uh, in the keywords that Sing Me In, and then you get down to a list of uh, 78 entries at this point, but they keep on adding some. And this is the, the interface. And then for some songs, you will find a video uh, and usually you have a description. Maybe I have an example there. So this is one song, for example. So as you can see, you have the title, you have uh, who has published it, if it's published or not. If it's published, then you have access to the link to the publishers and and you can find a reference and order it. And there you know the text is in Turkish. The draw and the style is explained, the type of voicing, if it's difficult or not, and so on. So you have a lot of information and that is added. And then you can access in quite a lot of the items uh, on uh, Musica to uh, an extract of the score. So if you can read music, it's quite useful. You can access sometimes recording, videos, uh, pronunciation files. Then you have somebody reading the text for you and for the singers, which is also a very good tool. Translations. So a lot of different tools that you can use uh, as a teacher, as a conductor in, in the frame of your work. The access, the basic access to Musica is free. I think your research is limited to the 50 first results, but if you have a clear uh, research, that's usually, usually quite uh, uh, enough. Or you can, if you are a member of any big organization and they are also a member, you can have access to the full uh, results. But uh, usually it's um, quite sufficient. And that's a very good tool. So if you don't know it, I really invite you to go to uh, musica.net. I think that's the, this is the, the link. Maybe Julia, you can put it on the, on the chat. It's a very good tool uh, to use. I don't know if you have questions about this tool, um, but really take some time to explore it. It's very rich and, uh, and useful in, for many projects. Then the, I just wanted to also remind you of the next webinars. Uh, so we will be presenting uh, tomorrow at five, the handbook about singing with groups of young refugees. And on Monday, uh, the last one will be about including young people with migrant backgrounds in existing choirs, which is another type of specific uh, uh, target group. Okay, uh, that was the main presentation. I don't know if you have specific questions that you want to discuss, uh, so you can ask them through the chat or on Facebook. I don't know if you get questions on Facebook, Julia. No?
So then if you don't have any questions, and okay, you can also at any time send us an email if you have a specific question, if you have a request, you need some advice, we can point you to the uh, existing experiences and best practices when we have the contact, we will do that gladly, no problem. Or give us a feedback on the handbooks, because once again, they are a tool for you and you have to do your own project. That was really the idea and we hope they are useful. So let us know what works and what does not. Otherwise, I would just uh, uh, be happy to meet you tomorrow at three for the next webinar. I will introduce it and then it will be uh, uh, presented by uh, our friends from uh, Turkey and Norway that will present uh, the other handbook. So I wish you a very uh, uh, end of day and end of afternoon and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.